Well, hi there, sports fans. Welcome to another uh, exciting edition of Physics 12. And today we're going to look at uh, Lesson 5.1, which is uh, begins to look at circular motion. And what we're going to be looking at is what we call uniform circular motion. And this generally is something that's moving in a circle in a horizontal kind of an orientation rather than in a vertical vertical orientation. We will look at those later on, but for now, we're going to start to look at uniform circular motion, and this is motion in a circle of constant radius at constant speed. And as I mentioned, uh, this would be in a horizontal kind of an orientation, so we're looking down from the top on the motion of this object right here. Now, uh, what, we, what we have here is we're looking at the direction of the velocities of the object at different points around the circle. So here, the velocity and the velocities will be at a tangent to the circle, and you, you should have come across the word uh, tangent before, so we don't need to, to cover that now. Uh, but at this point, the velocity will be in that direction, and here the velocity would be in a different, uh, uh, different direction. The magnitude of the velocities will be the same, but their direction is going to be different. So let's look at that a little bit more closely. So at this point A here, we have that the velocity is in this direction here, and at point B, its velocity is in that direction there. As I said, their magnitudes are the same, but their directions are different. So there's V1 and V2. I've just put them, uh, redrawn them over there. Now let's use uh, terminology that we're a little bit more familiar with. So we'll use V final and we'll use V initial. And then let's look at this equation of motion here that we've seen before. V final equals V initial plus AT. And let's rearrange that equation. So V final equals V initial plus A delta T, actually, to be a little bit more correct. And now, if we move things around a little bit, A delta T is going to equal V final minus V initial. So A delta T equals V final minus V initial. So that means that uh, acceleration, the acceleration vector will be V final minus V initial divided by delta T. Now delta T is a, uh, is a scalar, so it's not going to change the direction of these, uh, of those vectors. So we'll actually just go ahead and do that, um, do that subtraction. V final minus V initial. If you recall how we did that with vectors, what we'll do is we'll take V final minus V initial is equal to V final plus the negative V initial. So here is your negative V initial. All we do is we just change its direction, and now we've got negative V initial. And now we can go ahead and add those two vectors together. So we'll take V final plus negative V initial, add those together, like so. We'll put the, the head of one to the, to the tail of the other. And there is our resultant vector. That's V final minus V initial. And this then is equal to the acceleration. So the acceleration then, the acceleration vector is V final minus V initial divided by AT. But if you look at the direction of that vector there, um, and if we make delta T very small, the acceleration vector is actually toward the center of the circle. And so that means then that what we have is we do have a change in direction of velocity, so that means we have to have acceleration, and the acceleration um, actually equals V squared uh, divided by R, and it is toward the center of the circle. Now to actually get to this, and it requires some fairly uh, complex uh, calculus, which we, we won't go through uh, at this time, but you should have you might have recognized that if we make delta t very small and it's actually getting towards zero, then this equation will hold true. So the acceleration equals m v squared over r, and because we have a change in direction of velocity, we have to have acceleration. So that's what our acceleration um, equals, and it's toward the center of the circle. And again, as we said, this is for uniform um, circular motion. And there is the uh, equation that we use 
in describing the acceleration for uniform circular motion. So let's look at the, let's have a look at this now. A equals V squared over R. Let's see if the units of this uh, make sense. We know that velocity or speed is uh, meters per second. And we know that the radius of a circle is measured in meters. So let's put that into here now. So we have uh, m over s squared divided by m. And that's going to equal m squared over s squared times 1 over m. So whenever you divide by something, you multiply by its reciprocal. And we can simplify this so that that m disappears and one of these disappear. And we get meters per second squared. And so these are indeed the units of acceleration. And so even though we didn't go through the, the, uh, the whole way that we actually get to this equation here, we can confirm that the units are indeed correct. And so this, this equation um, holds true for uniform circular motion. So the acceleration then um, is toward the center of the circle and we call it centripetal acceleration. This is the correct word for this kind of acceleration toward the center of a circle. Um, and the, the word we use is centripetal. So for an object to be in uniform circular motion, there has to be a, a net force. If we have acceleration, there has to be a force. And so uh, we actually go right back to F equals MA. We already know the acceleration, so then we can simply write the force. F equals MA, which is MV squared over R. So the acceleration is V squared over R. We just multiply by the mass of the object, and that'll tell us the force that we need in order to keep it moving in a circular motion. So we can see that the force, it must be inward by thinking about this kind of a situation. If you're twirling a ball that's attached to a string and you're, you're spinning it around in a circle, then you can, you can think about the fact that there has to be a force on there because it takes a force, or, or you can feel the force on the string when you twirl it around um, in your hand. So there is no such thing as centrifugal force, C-E-N-T-R-I-F-U-G-A-L. Unfortunately, that's a term that is quite common in our vocabulary, but there is no such thing, really. Um, centrifugal means uh, something away from the center of a circle, and that does not take place with circular motion. There is a centripetal force, which keeps it moving around in the circle. And what we think of as being centrif a centrifugal force is actually, uh, is actually just the inertia of the object whereby um, the object tends to move in a straight line, like this right here. If, the, if you would uh, let go of this object, when it's in this position right here, it would go off on a tangent, then that's, that is because of the inertia of the object. It's not a so-called centrifugal force. So uniform circular motion, it requires a force to keep it moving in a circle. It's referred to as a centripetal force. And um, the, the equation for that, the, the force required in order to keep it moving in a circle is mv squared over r and we will be using that quite a bit when we look at um, circular motion.